Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Grumman Pilots YouTube channel. And today we're going to talk about your insurance and all the pieces that fit into that puzzle. I mean, there's a lot of them. Combined single limit, in-flight insurance, hull in motion, hull not in motion, passenger liability, medical payments. What a barrage of terms. Let's take a look at some of them and have some fun with them. And so we would like to ask you, please subscribe hit the like button, and hit the notify to stay current with our content. Now we have insurance because even if we're in a hangar, that doesn't mean the hangar is not going to blow over. That actually happened in Emmett, Idaho, back when I was tied down out there in a windstorm. Also, too, I'd like to thank Rob Henning. He used to own November 9630 uniform. He did a lot of airbrushing, hats, and other artwork, and he made me this t-shirt back in the 90s. It's a lovely one, and I still love to wear it. Nice long sleeve, very colorful, and people like it. Now, the insurance puzzle, in the most general of terms, it can be really confusing because people will say, well, there's public liability. Then there's passenger liability. And then they'll throw in combined single limit. What does that really mean? Then there's ground risk with no emulsion. So you, your hull's protected. Then there's how the hull is protected for insurance when it's taxiing. And then, of course, there's in-flight insurance. So those are some of the things that most people are familiar with. Now, I'm not going to define each of these terms for you because a lot of them you will have an idea on. You should always check your policy. But when you go to get insurance on an airplane, what is the value of the aircraft? What pilots are going to be allowed to fly it? What deductible are you going to have on the airplane before your insurance kicks in? What are going to be the limits on the deductibles and of the other parts of your airplane? How's the hull insured? And is it hangered or is it not hangered? Now here are some more of the esoteric terms that you'll come across. The name of the insured policy owner, pretty much standard. Then we have the hull in motion. Then we have the number of hours in type. Then we have a declaration page. And that basically describes the policy. Then we get into the hull. Then we get into the liability. Now we also have physical damage to the aircraft. Then there are going to be medical payments. Now here's one of my favorites, the open pilot's warranty or open pilot's clause. Then you have the purpose of the aircraft. Is it used for business or is it used for pleasure? Either one will affect your rate. Is it used for industrial aid as part of operating a business but not commercially? Or is it being used commercially like part 135? So these will all affect it. Is it involved where it can be damaged by war? Now that's an add-on as well as the terrorism risk you can add. Those are add-ons that you have to require. They're not part of a standard policy. Then we have the person who the policy is named for. Usually the person who pays for it. Then we have who's insured by the policy. Could be the name insured, could be additional. We might have a dozen additional people to insure. There's a warranty breach, what you can do to void your warranty. Then there are the single limits for all the different markers that you have on your policy. Is there a sublimit that you have to worry about? What about subrogation? If you're violating part of your insurance and how do they handle that? There's a waiver of subrogation and you can look that term up, it's a big one. Then there's premises liability for your aircraft. Then you have promises liability. That's a fun one. My mechanic promised. You have products and you have the operational insurance. And then you have those who keep them in a hangar. So ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot to go to making up your insurance. It's just a bunch of pieces. We don't all understand them. And so my best recommendation after we have just done this for the Project Tiger to get it back in the air is that talk to your insurance company have them explain it and work out the policy that suits you best for what you're using the airplane for. So ladies and gentlemen, we hope you found all this useful and informative. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day flying your insured Grumman.